Welcome to Chem Doctor. And what I want to do in this video now uh, is apply our use of oxidation numbers and our ability to um, calculate charge or oxidation number for an individual element to evaluating uh, whether or not a chemical equation or a chemical reaction uh, is, is an oxidation reduction reaction. Um, remember that, that an oxidation reduction reaction, by definition, is a chemical reaction where there is a demonstrated exchange of electrons from one element or compound in the reaction to another element or compound. So the goal here is to look at an equation like the one I have on the screen and determine whether or not electrons were actually transferred in the course of the chemical reaction. The way that we do this is by identifying the uh, oxidation number or the charge on all of the elements that appear in the chemical reaction and within the compounds. And then we simply look uh, to identify whether or not a change in, in oxidation number or charge has occurred for any of the elements that are involved in the reaction. And if there has been a change, then that means that electrons were indeed transferred and that therefore this reaction would be considered uh, redox. Now, for those of you that have studied hard and practiced all year long, you realize when you look at this equation that this is a combustion reaction. So in essence, we already know that this is a redox reaction, but we're going to go ahead and start with this one anyway. Now, it's important that you know the uh, uh, rules for assigning oxidation numbers. You're going to find these um, usually in chapter three or chapter four of a general chemistry text that's used at the, at the university level or in an advanced placement chemistry uh, textbook. So it, it, you're going to find the rules in chapter three or four. You need to commit those rules to memory. Now, the first thing is when we go through an equation like this, what I usually recommend to my students is that you identify any pure elements because the oxidation number for a pure element is zero. And we see in this equation that we have diatomic oxygen, which is the uh, lowest uh, energy form of, of oxygen found at ambient temperatures and pressures and the oxidation number therefore for this element is going to be zero. Um, when we inspect the other compounds that, that we find in this uh, equation you see that there are no other elements that are actually uh, uh, present here. Everything else is in the form of a compound. So let's begin with the CH4. Now as, as I described have described in previous videos, what we're going to do is set up a simple equation here. We, we recognize the fact that the sum uh, total of the oxidation numbers, which is a theoretical charge, or the charge on the elements within this compound, they must all sum to zero. So we're going to set up a simple equation for the elements that appear in methane, where this is going to be equal to zero. The carbon is actually the unknown here. We don't, we don't know what this is. But the hydrogen is a known. For hydrogens that we find in compounds, most of the time, the H is going to be uh, present with an oxidation number of plus 1. Remember that it, it appears in group 1A. And the elements in group 1A all ionize to form uh, plus 1 cations. OK. So in setting up the equation, then we'll, what I'll do is I'm, I will indicate the carbon as, as the unknown. I'll just use its symbol, and we're going to add this to the hydrogen. Now, there are four hydrogens, and each hydrogen is worth plus one. So our equation will reduce to C plus four is equal to zero. Therefore, the oxidation number on the carbon is minus four, OK? Now we're going to move to the products. We're going to do the same thing for the CO2 that we did for the methane. So we'll set up our equation. We recognize that oxygen, which is found in a compound, is almost always going to be minus 2. All right. And the carbon, like with the methane, is going to be our unknown. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up our little formula here. So it's going to be carbon, again, is the unknown. We're going to be adding that to the oxygen. There are two oxygens. 
okay, two oxygens, and each oxygen's worth minus two. And we set the whole thing equal to zero. So it's going to be C minus four is equal to zero. So we see that the carbon in CO2 is plus four. So the carbon is plus four. Now, as of right this instant, you, you can recognize that the carbon has actually undergone an oxidation number change. So we know right at this moment that this is in fact an oxidation reduction reaction because we can detect a change in the carbon going from minus four in the reactant to plus four in one of the products. Now, to finish up, we also notice that the oxygen is starting out at zero here and has gone to minus two in the CO2. Question is what happens here? Although, let me back up and slow down. The fact that we see that in the oxygen of CO2 that the, that the oxygen here is minus two, that tells us already that, that we can detect a change in going from elemental oxygen to, the, uh, to, the, to a, a new state where oxygen is in the form of a compound and has an oxidation number of minus two. So this equation is definitely redox, and I'll go ahead and label it this way. Now the question becomes, can we, can we determine which of the two reactant compounds was oxidized versus reduced. Now, by definition, if something is oxidized, that means it's lost electrons, all right? And something that is reduced has gained electrons, gained electrons. So let's deal with the methane first. You see that its oxidation number starts out at minus four and it ends up at plus four. Okay, the only way we can go from a negative number to a positive number was, was because um, this particular uh, reactant, or in this case, the carbon that is part of this reactant, has actually undergone a loss of electrons. So this guy here is oxidized. The oxygen, on the other hand, all right, is going from an oxidation number which is zero uh, to an oxidation number, which is minus two, all right? Notice I kind of skipped over the H2O here, but the oxygen that's present in H2O is going to be minus two, and the hydrogen here is plus one. So the oxygens that appear in the products here are both minus two, and you can see from the reactant side of the reaction that we're going from elemental oxygen, which is zero, to minus two, so the oxygen has gained electrons. It's gained electrons and that means that the oxygen, elemental oxygen that is present in this reaction was reduced. Okay, I think we have time for another problem. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just grab one here right out of a, right out of a book. All right, so um, let's see what we're gonna do. We'll go with uh, SO3. Um, SO3 plus H2O um, to make sulfuric acid, so H2SO4. Now we're going to work quickly here. Um, we don't have any elements, uh, individual uh, elements that are present in this reaction, so what we're going to need to do is go through and determine the oxidation number, which is a theoretical charge, or the charge on each of the elements that are in the compounds. So let's start with SO3. So we're gonna set up our simple, again, we're gonna set up a simple equation here. The oxygen, whenever it's present in a compound, most of the time it's minus two. The sulfur, therefore, in this case, is our unknown. All right, so we're gonna set it up. It'll be S plus three times minus two is equal to zero. So S minus six is equal to zero. So S is equal to plus six in this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and indicate that here, plus six. Now, in H2O, our H is plus one based on the rules and the oxygen again is present within a compound is minus two. Now let's look at the other side of our equation. For the sulfuric acid, the H that's in here is definitely plus one and the oxygens are minus two. And that means the only unknown we have is gonna be the sulfur 
in the context of how it appears in this equation. So let's set up our equation. We're going to have two hydrogens equal to plus one, plus the unknown, which is sulfur, plus four oxygens, which are both, uh, or excuse me, four oxygens, which are worth minus two apiece, and the whole thing together is equal to zero when we sum it up. So we're going to have two plus the sulfur minus eight equals zero. So S minus six is equal to zero. So S is plus six. All right, now we inspect the numbers and you can see that in this particular uh, um, equation, this chemical reaction, that in fact, none of the elements underwent a change in oxidation uh, number. So this is not redox. Okay, so to reiterate, this is the game you're playing. You take the chemical equation that you're given. You need to go through that equation and establish the oxidation numbers for each of the elements. You then inspect those numbers and you look to see if any of those numbers under, underwent a change. If there was a change, then that reaction is a redox reaction or oxidation reduction. Then you can identify which reactant was oxidized, which reactant lost electrons, and which reactant was reduced because that particular reactant gained electrons. As I showed in the example here, this particular chemical reaction uh, below on the screen uh, did not undergo uh, a redox reaction because none of the elements underwent a change in their oxidation number. All right, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this video.